السلام علیکم فاطمہ جی فرام پاکستان کراچی سے ود ایکو انسپائر لونگ شو اینڈ آئی ایم ٹو ڈے ویری ہیپی ٹو گلیڈ آ ویری امیزنگ گیسٹ ود می شی از فرام کیلیفورنیا سو آئی ایم جسٹ انوائٹنگ ہر اینڈ آئی ڈیفینیٹلی یو ول بی آلسو ہیپی ود می ٹاک شی از امیزنگ لیڈی یس ویلکم لوری مارشل ان مائی شو your show it is our show eco inspired living show how are you lori i am very happy to be here and to be with you and to focus on how we can support the children to be their biggest best selves amazing and i'm so very glad that you are here to share your experience your knowledge and how to grow up your child and how much it is important for the mother that they focus this time period, the early years of every child. So what do you think? How much it is important? We get, as women, we get to carry a child inside of our body. We get to feel their first kicks, their first movements, We are attuned to their needs. We get to nurse them. We get to teach them language. We get to see them grow and change every day. And they, we think we understand how to handle something and then they change. And we have to keep changing and changing and changing. And there is nothing that can substitute for the attachment that happens between the mother and the child. That attachment is the foundation for the health of for the rest of their life. And of course, the father's attachment is so important as well. And the father supporting the mother so that she doesn't have to experience stress. Um, the world is so stressful. So as little stress as uh, the mother can be protected from, you know, as much stress as the mother can be protected from, the better. Um, The, the mother has uh, the gift to understand what story the child needs to help them grow bit better and to learn uh, how to solve problems. We use our stories to teach the children how to handle conflicts, how to handle feelings of being jealous and feelings of being angry. So the mothers are the teachers of story, the teachers of language, the teachers of what's right and wrong. The mothers have the holiest PhD job on the planet. <laughs> It's so beautiful, definitely. I think so, okay, this is the point to every woman, every mother should understand the importance of the, this thing. Yes. And there are, our children come in with natural curiosity. They want to under, they want to know what everything is. They want to understand how things work. And they also come in with natural creativity. They experiment and play. And as mothers, it is our job to support curiosity and creativity. Those two things are so, so important because that is preparation for the rest of their lives. None of us know how to solve the problems that we're facing. We have to be creative together and we have to just keep wanting to learn to be lifelong learners. So, exactly. so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, please continue. Um, I am the mother of two children. Their names are Jeremy, who is now 37, and Daniel, who are 30, is 34. And I raised them in a small town in, in Virginia, in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountain, where nature was their first teacher. Wow. And I'm so glad I did. They got to spend hours and hours in the woods. And that's uh, so healthy. And now uh, they both live in Texas. And the oldest, Jeremy, is an assistant professor at the University of Texas in El Paso. And Daniel works for Dell Computers in Austin. 
And when they were growing up, every year I would ask, what setting does my child's soul need this year? And sometimes, and I would listen to them um, as, as well as what my wisdom was. And sometimes it was to be in public school. Sometimes it was to homeschool. Sometimes it was to start a school. And I started a school with Waldorf ideas. Um, and Rudolf Steiner founded the Waldorf uh, movement in 1917, I believe, around the same time that Maria Montessori started her schools. And both of them had come through World War I and saw how horrible war was. And they wanted to make schools that would help prevent war. So peace was a very important center to both Montes Maria Montessori and Rudolf Steiner. And um, I studied the Waldorf curriculum and it has some very wonderful ideas like asking what story does this soul need now in their development? And so for instance, um, Steiner thought that eight-year-olds were, who were beginning to move away from um, seeing that they were one with the universe because children from the time they are tiny to about eight, they understand that they are part of the universe, that there's no difference between them and the universe. And around eight in our culture, and it may be different in your culture, they begin to understand that they can be a separate person. And so the story of Adam and Eve and them challenging God and then having to leave the garden and then take care of themselves is a very powerful story for children who are beginning to see they might be separate. And in the Waldorf curriculum, they then do cooking and sewing and building of shelter like Adam and Eve had to do. In the preschool of the Waldorf schools, the students bake bread, sing songs, play with uh, fairies and dwarves and elves and plant gardens. And they hear lots of stories and songs. And there's not a lot of pressure to learn the alphabet. There's a lot of time to experiment and play and use their imagination. And I think that's a very, very wonderful thing. Baking bread, making soup, cleaning up, doing real things. And exactly, and so beautiful. And one thing I really want to appreciate that you are sharing your experience, you're sending your child to the village area to enjoy the nature, to observe the nature. It helps them to create, uh, to promote their creativity. Yes. So absolutely. it's very amazing thing, but it's not for um, practical, not for possible for every pet. Right. It's so difficult. But Definitely environment as much as possible for every child. Yes, and part of eco is And one thing that you are telling the story, no doubt, the story. Exactly. No doubt, a wonderful thing. The uh, storytelling, it is, uh, have the very strong impact for every child life. Yes. And we always, well, now we are the adults, now we are the grown up, now we are, but still I, uh, I love to hear the stories. Yeah, my father. <laughs> oh, yeah, it makes so much sense. And stories can help children decide what's right and wrong. When they hear somebody else making a choice that hurts someone or that ends up making them the character feel bad, then then they can figure it out for themselves. You don't you're not being a bossy, naggy mm -hmm. mother. You're giving them the, the wisdom. Exactly. And, wisdom and the opportunity to create the, uh, call it uh, decision making skills. If we give them to choice, you wanna this, you'd like this, 
what you want to do like this type of the simple sentences is make help to a student to be take that decision usually if i as far as my society is concerned so the parent make them their child too much pamper too much facilitate hmm they did all the things uh, they never give them to the opportunity to do their work themselves yes. and it's really harmful it's very harmful yes there is a huge drive in addition to curiosity and creativity there's a huge drive to master things to want to be useful and to want to gain skill that's you watch a child learn how to walk you don't have to say it's time to walk now they want to walk and they want to talk and you don't have to say it's time to learn language they're imitating it they want to learn so giving children real work to do is so so very important and you can do things like making uh if you have a toilet paper that has a a roll inside of it a cardboard roll you can fill that with pebbles and put a cloth around it and you can give it to um uh places that take care of cats or uh, uh, for an animal or another child to play with the cat you can do very simple activities that make the child feel like they are doing something they want to do something they want to help that that is their reason to be just like with us they they want to be useful so as much work as they can do and the the work of lifting and carrying it builds their body um you know helping out to carry things is very important in this 0 uh, to 5 age <laughs> it's amazing activity that you share with um, me and my viewers it's helped to a student to realize how much the grandmother help um, mother loves uh, your grandsons so yes. it's really a very wonderful and it's help you know the the love it's the basic asset for build up the any any human boy any child to be become the good human it's yes. a very basic thing If, yes. uh, when i discuss with the parents so i always respect uh, i always respect respect requesting them to please never never uh, what should i say always be give the uh, uh, never stop to give to uh, your love to your child and you make them to realize how much you are loving them so yeah. these things make and um, make you the relation very good relation between you and your child it's help them if they, when they were in trouble when they were have any problem mental problem the physical problem when they were in painful situation so automatically they will discuss to you yes so you so you will be able to resolve their problem and help them to be how to be solve the problem like this so this yeah. is a wonderful thing so i always focus this to say to the parent to the very good famous i may be possible uh, my childhood i used to listen dadi amma kehti hai urdu mein ab you understand what is ki meaning hai ki ke dadi sunati hai the student children have the power of the wonder the uh, they have this thing so how, usually i observe the our education in my society and usually parent they kill the this uh, this speciality of the child if because they always be ready to explore the things oh my charging is going to be low so ek minute let me and <laughs> Yes. 
don't trust them. And then the bear apologizes and gives the things back. And everybody is so happy and feels more trust and wants to play. So you can make stories that involve your child's behavior that doesn't work and, and have that be the center of the story and then come back and tell what happens when the behavior does work. So honoring what your child is interested in. Once um, I, I wrote a, this book called Beating the Odds Now, which is for teachers, but it's also for parents. And it has uh, 10 steps. And the very first step is to find the spark in your child. What sparks their excitement? And one time I was driving and I had my son and another boy in the back seat, and we were driving through the country. And when Jeremy saw a horse, he got so excited. And the other boy, Colin, was like, couldn't care less. And then we drove by a truck, and Colin was so excited, but Jeremy couldn't care less. So Colin came in with this love of trucks, and at the age of 37, he still loves trucks. And Jeremy came in with his love of horses and animals, and he still has this love of horses and animals. And now his little boy is so interested in birds and bugs. So it is a great gift, the passion that your child comes in with to listen to it. It's a gift from God of what their work is supposed to be. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Yes. I mean, and thank you so much to continue the session. The laptop is going to be dead, and I use now my mobile. <laughs> and thank you so much. This is a technology. Now I've become the master of the technology. <laughs> I don't know the why. Uh, the, uh, it's fully charged, but what's wrong? Ke? It's dead. Oh. It's amazing. It's amazing that you are sharing the story and, and the importance of the story. And you know, you are a very good narrator. Thank you. And you, know, it, yeah, you. Since your your computer is going to die, maybe we can have another time. I would love to talk some more and to hear some more about uh, your work as a Montessori teacher and to learn more about Pakistan's children. I would love that very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I really, really uh, love your uh, discussion, <laughs> and I'm very glad to that you are the part of Eco Inspired Living uh, show and the purpose of this show to create the connectivity all around the world to and uh, uh, to uh, create the positivity to exper uh, share experience. But must lie must. But my last question is this: What is your passion? My passion is that ch all the children of our world be safe and that all the children of our world know that they are creative and they are like nature because nature is always creating beautiful forms and they are a beautiful form. So if all children were safe on this earth, we would have heaven on earth. So Amazing. that is lovely, lovely. You, your passion is very... Um, nice and very appreciable. I really uh, like. Uh, so, what will be our action? How we can how we can put take the responsibility to make sure that this world become the safe for the every child. So, what should we do as a human? Uh, as a human, first as a mother um, and as a woman to understand that our our priority of love and relationship and safety must be communicated to the men so that they are making decisions for seven generations to come and that we are making decisions for seven generations to come, which is a Native American concept. And to know what sacred work it is to be a mother, so hard, but to realize that it is, it is a uh, it is the most important work that can be done and to never doubt that your gifts to your children every day are being part of God and being part of nature 
And to not make your child feel small or bad or wrong for who they are, that while you teach them what works and what works is love. We have on our planet all this war and pollution and fighting that doesn't work. What works is to love nature and to learn from nature. And we are wired for love and that works. So exactly. just believe in that. Definitely, it's lovely, lovely, very nice. And, and thank you so much, uh, Lori. Marshall, I am pronouncing your name, right? Yes, I am. And I put my website up there in the chat. If you wanted to put that on there, then people can see to learn some more about me. Okay. Uh, it, yeah, it's laurie-marshall.com. Um, yes. Aloha, Haji Khan. So good to see you. Yes. Actually, I, I, uh, I'm not... Uh, I, you can see the... Other so comments for Karim up. Yes, sir. Maybe I'll make the I'll put it on the live comment here about that. Let me okay. see. Um oh there's Lynn is here. No, okay. I, I can't add them. But we, we will continue this wonderful conversation and I love your questions and I want to learn more about what you're doing. And thank you so much uh, to part of the Eco Inspired Living Show. It's helped yeah. us understand yes the importance of the early childhood yes and so important so inshallah we will be meet again until we meet again okay. inshallah <laughs> bye bye okay love is thank you so much so bye bye So uh, she is the Marsha Laurie, and today my guest, Eco Inspire Living Show. Definitely, I actually uh, I'm facing the some internet issue, but hopefully you are enjoying this live live session, Eco Inspire Living Show. And if do you have any question regarding to the uh, re regarding to the early childhood, so you can uh, comment us. And uh, Luri is sharing her website. I think so. Okay, I actually. So you also also can contact to her. And thank you so much. Uh, take care. Inshallah, we will coming soon with the next episode, with the next show, and with a new one.